Robert, you there? Uh, yeah, I can barely hear you, though. Thanks, uh, I'm thanks for holding. Let me take this off speakerphone, just a moment. Yeah, that's a good idea. Take okay, us is that better? Speak. Can you hear me? Yeah, take it, yeah and, and make sure you turn down your TV, but thanks for waiting. Okay, yeah, no problem. Uh, first of all, that previous call, when you mentioned O'Hare, I almost spit out my drink. That was pretty, that was pretty funny. If it was Thank a crank, you. that was hilarious. <laughs> okay. But uh, what he said about, uh, about the Bible, pretty interesting thing that, like, uh, you know, you're familiar with the Jefferson Bible, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, he took all the parts that were important and took out the ghost stories, you know. I, I think that was a great accomplishment on his part. Well, I think it was a good start. I had a question regarding uh, your opinion on infinite regress. What about it? Well, do you think it's, uh, you know, reasonably possible? You know, is it, do you think uh, an infinite regress of causes is possible? Um, we've talked about this before. Oh, we have? I, yeah. I've uh, only seen your stuff on YouTube, honestly. Yeah, there's like 11 years of shows you can actually go watch. But And, and no, I'm not, we talk about the same thing almost every week. So we're talking about um, a causal chain. Yeah. Um, Sagan came up with an answer th that I, uh, I've really kind of admired, wh where someone was making this argument against an infinite regress and saying, at, at this point we must stop lest we stop asking what came before this, and Sagan's response was basically, so why stop asking? Um, uh, I don't know, you know, obviously you can mathematically demonstrate the, the, uh, the problems and the paradoxes that come up when you're talking about infinities. Uh, I don't even bother really worrying about it. Um, it may be the case mathematically or in reality that, that an infinite regress is possible, although we're going to get to some kind of state change at the event horizon. Um, my thing is, is that when we get back to the, to the Planck time, we can't say anything about what came before. Um, we can't, with any uh, reasonable authority or assurance, make any statement. Perhaps a, a you know, we're, we're, we've got the, a number of universal models where um, you've got the I guess it's pseudo steady state university where you have a singularity that existed forever, and and then. Right, but in the case of that, you'd have it would have some kind of catalyst. Otherwise, why didn't it happen sooner? It, it doesn't necessarily need an external catalyst, though. Well, if the catalyst was in and of itself, then it should have happened sooner, right? Ha what's sooner? I mean. Yeah. What well, does that mean? Like throughout time, like if it existed, like you know, back before the Big Bang. There must have been some kind of change to uh, to make it happen, right? And you know, if there was like you can't have change without a cause. According to are the laws of this universe, yes. Yeah, but right, and that's time, exactly my point. If you go outside the laws the of this needs. universe, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying that the, you know the, the idea of, of uh, prior to Planck time cuts off at the knees everything we know. So we can't make any statements of knowledge based on what we know about this universe that apply to prior to the to prior to this universe. What we okay. know breaks down. All right, yeah. Uh, well, well, my point kind of was is that at that uh, like point in the far past where you know we we're not exactly sure what's happening, we can like pretty much agree that something happened, right? Oh, like, just like this Big universe. Bang or what have you. Something right. happened, and instead of and instead of this universe, I usually say the current state of the universe. Yeah, whatever you want to call uh, it. Be, be, because you know the Big Bang model, as I understand it, is that um, you know it, it's not like the well, anyway, let's let's get off that. I'll let you finish or continue. Oh, well, it, it's not going to be much. Uh, I was just like, you know, for a while now I've been, uh, well, I guess you could call it a Spinozan. Uh, I think his explanation of uh, substance monism is pretty much the most coherent uh, theology slash metaphysic uh, that has ever been presented. And uh, in my opinion, he got it right. Uh, you can call uh, whatever you like. You can call it nature. You can call it God. You can call it the Big Bang. But uh, you know there is a first cause if you uh, if you don't accept infinite regress, and I, I just think that like it meshes very well with uh, opinions about evolution and such, given that well basically there are natural properties and you know things happen. Yeah, and and you know one of the models and and, and I use this kind of as an example. This isn't necessarily um, what I accept. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure that I accept. Um, anything. I'm not sufficiently versed in in the broader aspects of astrophysics um, to really say this is the model that I prefer and thinks right. Especially when when um, 
you know, the, the scientists ne aren't necessarily coming to any agreement. You had um, originally the, the idea of a steady state universe, and then you had the universe expanding, and then there were uh, claims of the universe contracting, and then there's the possibility of the universe is cyclical, that it expands out and then compresses on itself. Um, and this model, by the way, uh, may actually provide uh, an infinite series with no external cause, because a after the collapse, you, you would reach a state where um, it's all self-contained, um, including the energy needed to cause a, an expansion. Right, um, but at the same time, you still have an infinite regress, and the thing right. it is, in the, in, kind of, in the broader I kind of cycle. Too, uh, I, I, yeah, right, I it's kind of a fallacy, but uh, the fact that, you know, Aristotle, you know, since his time, people have been trying to uh, disprove, like, you know, or rather prove uh, the possibility of an infinite regress, and they haven't been able to for 2,300 years. And, you know, I, I kind of respect Aristotle as uh, both, like, you know, a figure and, uh, you know, like an intellect unto himself. So, you know, that's, yeah. that's kind of my own prejudice working in there. Yeah, and, and but, the, you know, well, I don't, I don't want to get off on, on big, long discussions about infinity again. Uh, in short, my answer is, I don't know. Um, that's actually a good answer, actually. That's a very good answer. But I do know this. The people who would assert, even if they're correct, that there must have been some cause, some first cause, to assert anything at all about that first cause beyond uh, it, it its requirement is absurd. To uh, apply any characteristics to it and definitely to say that it's this transcendent intelligence that created everything and cares about us and wants you to, you know, stop masturbating, uh, that, that's just silly. Yeah, certainly. But, right, well, thank you for taking my call. Thanks, Robert. Thank Appreciate it. Yeah, have a great day. You too. We wanna, I, I want to say one thing. I, there's nothing say about my stuff. No, I, I just wanted to add one thing. We got a, a letter that I just wanted to share. Someone uh, is, goes by the name of Rage <laughs> wrote in and said that he likes us together as a team on the show because we're like peanut butter and chocolate. <laughs> really? I didn't get that letter. <laughs> yeah. And I don't really like Reese's Pieces that much or Reese's Yeah, I did. I wrote him back and I said that was my favorite uh, candy right. as a child, so. Well, I, sweet. Yeah, I was expecting jelly and then I saw chocolate and I was like, just like he knows me. See, we can't even get along on what candy we like. You were wrong. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's, so that's, that's, I just said thanks for that, Rage. Let's, uh, I know you, you got more, but. No, I don't. I'm, I'm I mean, I have other stuff I can talk about, but it's not. So okay, not so necessary. we'll keep the lines open. Um, and, and by the way, as a reminder for anybody who wants to, um, we go to dinner after the program's over. We'll be down there around 5 o'clock. Uh, Fred Gill's on Riverside. I'm sure they'll put it up right there. There it is.